everyone out there. This is Sconson with VaporizerReview.com. Uh, we got the Crafty here today from the makers of the Volcano, a very well-known vaporizer in this industry. It's been around for a lot, um, long time. The bag style, really all it's ever done. They had never really released much. There was the Plenty that came out at one point in time, but that too was a plug-in unit. So they finally released a portable vaporizer, uh, one of two of them. So we're gonna take a look at the Crafty. This one is a smaller of the two that they released, so less battery length on it. There is no actual digital display screen on it. They have an app on your phone that is powered through Bluetooth. I can show you later so you can get a better idea of how the temperature control works. But it's a simple unit and it's pretty straightforward. Let's go ahead and open up the box here and see what we got in front of us. So as with like all stores and Bickle products, um, like the Volcano, which is pretty expensive, be it the digital like I have here or even their classic, the Crafty and Mighty are pretty expensive. The Crafty here being $339 and the Mighty being like $399. So in terms of cost, this is probably one of the more expensive uh, portable vaporizers. It, very small though, for, in terms of portability, for the price you're getting, you are getting something that's not very bulky which I like. It's pretty straightforward. The mouthpiece moves out here, so when you're not using it, it it's definitely discreet. Kind of looks like something maybe Black & Decker would make. Uh, it's definitely not the most like awesome looking unit specifically. It does look kind of uh, industrial, but some people like that. I think it, uh, to me, it kind of looks like it could be cheap, but holding it in my hand, I feel like it, it is solid. A bunch of plastic here, I know, so a lot of people aren't a big fan of anything plastic. So I'm curious to find out how it tastes, that being said, with all the plastic. Go ahead and see what else we got here in the box, then. You know, all, all stores and Bickle stuff, probably expect it with anything they make. The instructions are pretty well designed. Not only uh, are they clear photos, they're usually pretty simple. It's not 70-some steps, it's six. It tells you exactly what you need to do, and then on the back it tells you about the care, the maintenance, also in six steps. So when it comes to ease of use, they do explain it very well right out of the box. It's not a confusing process. Of course, uh, any portable vaporizer that's uh, charged up, here is the charger that comes with it. Little accessories, uh, replacement o-ring, screens, the liquid pad, just the general accoutrement that comes with the unit. Um, all Stores and Bickle products do have one of their acrylic grinders, so that's always cool. Um, something unique and new to this one, it looks like, here is this load tool. Oh, losing pieces already. So this here uh, apparently fits over the top of the unit after it's all been disassembled, and it makes it easier to load right uh, into it. So that's something unique to it, so that I, I guess you're not drop an herb around the o-ring and other places, you know that every time you're getting it, boom, right into the bowl there. Boom, right into the bowl there. So I would say that's that's pretty nifty. That's something unique to this vaporizer. And of course, gotta keep it clean. Comes with a brush. So we've got everything out of the box now. Let's uh, take a little bit closer look at the actual operation of the unit. So I guess we got the herb loaded in there. I mean, this thing seems a little unnecessary. I feel like I can just take it, pinch it, put it in. Um, I guess some people out there found difficulty in loading things, so this will make it easier for you. I didn't think it was necessary. But very easy now. It is all right in there. There's none around the outside, so that's nice. Easy connection here. The mouthpiece just goes on. Oh, it goes on the other way. Easy connection. The mouthpiece just goes on and turns sideways. All right. Okay, so we've got the air backed in there. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. To do so, hold it down about two seconds. There are two heat settings though. I'm gonna go with the slightly hotter one. It's gonna flash red. If it's on the first heat setting, it's just gonna stay solid red. I like to get the party started and get things flashing. We're gonna take it to the hotter level. So the herb's already packed in there and the unit itself is heating up right now. I'm curious to see about how long it's gonna take to get up to this level. Um, from what I read though, there is uh, a little vibration that's going to occur when it's reached there, so I guess you can just be sitting around talking with people. You don't have to be paying attention to the light as it's flashing at you. The unit itself is going to 
signal it through a vibration that it is time to start vaporizing. So it might take a little bit here, but we're going to figure out just how long it does take to get the crafty up and rocking. Uh, I know the flavor production from it's supposed to be awesome. Uh, no plas or uh, no glass involves all plastic on it, so I'm curious to see how the components of the unit themselves are going to just the, any off flavor that's going to be produced. Uh, it's a quality name, so I'm assuming the product itself is going to be just as quality, but I'm curious how this is going to create great vapor as well as good tasting vapor. Uh, I'm excited to see what it's able to do here. All right, and it just vibrated in my hand. Uh, we're flashing green, so like I said, I'm on the higher temperature of the two, uh, so it's ready to vaporize. Let's see what this $400 piece of equipment can do for me. I would say it was worth the wait for the temperature uh, to heat up. First draw, clouds. So for $339, bucks, you can see the vapor production is pretty solid. You might think I'm smoking, honestly, from that, but it's vapor, it's thick. So if you like it on a thicker, uh, a thicker vapor production, I would definitely go with the second temperature setting. That's where I personally like to go, so you can actually kind of, I don't know if you can see it there, but it's almost kind of billowing out in essence. There's no forced air or fan or anything, so just as it's heating, it's kind of escaping through the top there. I know without a doubt, you can definitely see the vapor production is pretty awesome. It, it is thick, thick vapor here. Uh, before, <laughs> as I was saying while I was heating up, it wasn't getting warm in my hand. I, I could argue that a little bit now. On this side with the heating chamber, I can feel it. Uh, it's definitely starting to get some warmth to it. It's not like I'm uncomfortable holding it. I don't feel like the need to drop it and let it go. But there is some warmth to it, so we know when turning it off after the first use and slipping it into your pocket, your leg might get a little bit warm uh, from that there, but I mean, it's still kind of kicking out some vapor. Let's see what we got here. It looks like it uh, just went and shut off on me, so I'm thinking it's got an auto timer uh, shut off. I'm going to flip it back on here really quick and just to get it back to where I was at. Um, I'm a little surprised because even with all the plastic components, it actually tastes really good. It's not necessarily like the Ariser Air, per se, which just has that all-glass air path, but I'm not picking up anything funky. There's a lot of vaporizers that exist out there where when you first get them, they tell you to burn off all the factory oils. I didn't burn anything off. I just put my herb right into the chamber and heated it up. No weird flavors, no funkiness. A uh, little while to heat up, and even after turning itself off a little while to get back to the heat that it was at, so I would say that uh, is one of the things, but for the time I spent waiting, the flavor I get and the thick vapor production, it was worth the time it took to heat up. And so even after turning off on me and then going back onto the temperature I had, it's still producing clouds of vapor. And quite honestly, I did not pack that much into it. Using that little loading thing, which a little unnecessary, I'd only put a little like pinch in. It didn't take much, and it's still kicking out vapor for me really well. And the further along I get, I can tell it is getting slightly harsher, but as you can see, the clouds that are coming out, that's probably because the herb is pretty well vaporized. Even after like less than five, six draws, it's really taken a lot out of it. So efficiency. I would think it's pretty efficient vaporizer for how little I've packed and the vapor I'm getting from it. So now that we've uh, used it, uh, let's see what the uh, what happened to the herb. How did it come out? We got some pretty thick clouds from it and I honestly didn't pack that much into the chamber. I like it's pretty easy removal. It's on a little bit of a swivel here so all you have to do to pop it off, that's pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Let's take a look at the herb itself. Uh, as you can see it definitely came out pretty dark brown here. Got fully vaporized. I've had the opportunity to use the crafty now. 
um, a little more familiar with it. So let's talk about the cons of the unit. What don't I like about the Crafty? First off, and uh, very straightforward, is the battery time. I got about five uses, maybe five full sessions out of one charge on this. And as someone who likes to use it a lot, I vaporize quite a bit throughout the day. Having to deal with charging up all the time, a little bit of a hassle. So the battery time, you know, it's a little lacking. Another one, and I would say is kind of obvious to me perhaps, is just the aesthetic. Unless you look like you're out to buy a Black & Decker item, or you know, maybe you want to find something on the shelves at Home Depot for, for Dad for Father's Day, or even looks like it could be as far as like a little stocking stuffer for some like, it's just like a little tool, looks kind of like that. It's definitely not like, wow, that's amazing, what, what do you have there? It's a little ugly overall. And lastly, I would say, is the heat up time. It took a little while to get up to temperature. Even with my herb packed in there and ready to go, it took probably about four, maybe even four plus minutes from cold turned off to hot and ready to vape. So I would say that's kind of the downsides to the crafty. And three, two, one. Let's go ahead and talk about the pros of the crafty vaporizer. I would say first off is simply the uh, app that comes with it. You get the ability to kind of remove a lot of stuff from the vaporizer. There's no display screen. It makes it a little more compact as a result, but you don't lose any of the functionality of it. You can see what level the battery is at throughout the use. You can control the temperature, and you always have your phone on you anyway, so it's not like these things need to be built into the vaporizer themselves. So that's pretty cool. I, uh, I like uh, how compact it is and the portability of it. There's no additional pieces to it. The mouthpiece doesn't need to come off after use. As far as the herb chamber goes, it's literally right there and on a pivot. Very simple to use in that sense. I feel like it's something that easy in the pocket, ready to go. I like that a lot. And lastly, and the most obvious, plus the most important, is vapor production. This thing can rip. You saw it in the video. If you didn't see it, stop and go back and look and just see the vapor production that this thing gets. You're blowing clouds with it. That is pretty awesome. So all the cons aside, for the money, I think that really all that matters in the end is vapor production. You're ponying up quite a bit of cash to get a crafty. So I think that in the end, it's worth the money. In my personal opinion, if someone wants the best portable vaporizer, in terms of strictly vapor production, I suggest the Crafty. I think it's the one. Now, that being said, there are, are a lot of places you can go ahead and go and pick one up. So take a look at the links below and check out where I personally went and bought my Crafty. And as always, if you have any questions for me, leave them down in the comments below. Cheers, guys.